why not you go over the screen and show a few ways to do product research is share my screen here all right let me know if you can see my screen wonderful okay so right now we are inside of amazon us now if you guys are in amazon india you will want to make sure that you are on the marketplace that you want to be selling in. So if you're selling for India, you want to be doing your research on Amazon. If you're selling in Germany, you want to do your research in Germany, so forth. And creating a mold or going off changing the design, maybe adding some different colors. How to look at it? When you're launching a new product? Yeah. I mean, I think it's always split testing. It is so much about split testing, whether you are launching your first product or your next product, because it really comes down to what you can showcase about your brand, about your product. Hello everyone, welcome to the Rich Sellers Podcast. Today I join in with Shivali from Helium 10 and today we are going to have a blast. Today, we are not going to only discuss about product research, but Shivali is also going to go over the screen and show you some new ways to do product research by using Helium 10. Hi, Shivali. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for joining today. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm excited about all of this information I'm about to share, and hopefully those of you watching are going to find a lot of value in it. Definitely. We are up to it. So... Uh, Obviously, Amazon, they are changing every day, right? They are bringing on new features, new updates every day. And sellers are trying to cope up with all the new strategies. And also with all the Chinese sellers coming in, obviously, the, the Amazon marketplace, it have become a little bit competitive. So when you talk about product research, okay, we can uh, discuss about product research a little bit. Then I think you can also go over your screen and share some good ideas about being product research. So when you talk about product research, Let's talk about few ways that we can use Helium 10 to do product research apart from black box. Yes. So there are so many ways to do product research. And I think some of us forget that there are ways to do product research outside of Amazon as well. Of course, when you are shopping in your day-to-day -day store, maybe you're on a grocery run, you're taking a look shopping for a friend's birthday party gift, right? All of those moments are moments that you can also be browsing and even come out with a product idea, potentially find something that can do well on Amazon. Outside of maybe those day-to-day -day moments, you can end up having conversations with friends. You can go on Etsy. You can go on Pinterest. You can go on some third-party platforms and find demand. For example, TikTok, right? When you end up finding a, a trend there, you can end up catching a curve before it actually starts to peak on Amazon. So it's important to remember there are so many other ways that you can find products to base your business on. However, when it comes to Helium 10, we have over 30 plus tools. And so, yes, you can use Blackbox for product research, but you can also use our other tools such as Cerebro, such as going into Market Tracker or Market Tracker 360 if you have access to that taking a look at maybe the frequently bought together sections of Amazon when you're doing a search. If let's say you're not looking for your first product, you are looking to expand your product line offerings, then you can start taking a look at your competitor products uh, and seeing what are they starting to launch? Maybe seeing what are they bundling their products with? Or let's say that you have a specific niche. Well, how can you start thinking in a vertical format, but also a horizontal format of, what else would my audience be interested in, right? Getting to think about exactly what it is your consumer's interested in and then providing that product is going to really, really give you a good starting point of shortlisting ideas to find something that's really going to be profitable. Definitely. I think uh, also you talked about TikTok, finding trend in TikTok. I think when the trend hasn't uh, even emerged in Amazon, how do you go in validating that product? When we see the trend is emerging and in TikTok, we see the products are moving there, but the products may not have such huge search volume in Amazon yet. Mm -hmm. How do you go in validating those kind of products? 
So I, I'll give you an example. I recently was scrolling on TikTok as we normally do. And I came across a video for auto face tracking tripods. Now, I don't know if you've seen okay. that, but it is essentially for content creators. You just prop mm -hmm. up the product on a desk. And as you're moving around, it auto tracks where your face is. And okay. so it moves around and you see a product like that. You see it's going viral because you have thousands of likes on it. Right. And then you're seeing all these people comment and they're interested. Oh my gosh, where can I buy? And so I'll usually save that product or send it to myself. And so I have easy access to it. And I start to track this inside of Helium 10. So I'll go in, maybe I'll create a market inside of Market Tracker, see how that market share is really starting to pick up, or even just going in, taking a look at what exactly, com what competitors really exist inside of Amazon, and then doing a reverse ASIN keyword search. So going in, taking those product identifiers, and then doing a search on Cerebro so you can find the output of keywords. And as this product is really starting to pick up, you'll notice that one, you have maybe only three or four competitors at the top, or maybe even one or two sometimes, and that will start to increase, right? You'll end up seeing a snowball of reviews. Yeah. You'll start to see more competitors accrue. And then even with the keywords, you'll start to see that there's more and more keywords that are starting to be generated. So you go maybe from 3,000 keywords to all of a sudden you have 5,000 keywords. It's starting to pick up. And even inside of those keywords, how many keywords are being output? And you then have the factor of search volume, right? How many times is somebody searching up something? And so if, at, if you're seeing this really starting to, to change over time, you can capitalize on that opportunity. It is important to, rec to remember that you will be looking at six to eight weeks, though, of landed time, right? By the time that you're sourcing a product, you're finding some samples, Definitely. all of that yeah. good stuff. And so when you're finding something on TikTok, you want to be super proactive about getting the samples. Or even if, let's say, maybe you just want to act on it, maybe you end up doing like a ready to ship order for the first batch. And then as mm -hmm. you start getting reviews, then right afterwards, you can start going into a little bit more private label. So it really depends on how you want to approach it. But there's a number of things you can do to start validating those ideas. Make sure, of course, at the end of the day that it is a profitable product. Definitely. I think we had a lot of questions. Uh, I have those written down in the screen. So maybe we can take over, but why not you go over the screen and show a few ways to do product mm -hmm. research? Yes, absolutely. So what I'm going to do is share my screen here. Okay. All right. Let me know if you can see my screen. Wonderful. Okay. So right now we are inside of Amazon US. Now, if you guys are in Amazon India, you will want to make sure that you are on the marketplace that you want to be selling in. So if you're selling for India, you want to be doing your research on Amazon India. If you're selling in Germany, you want to do your research in Germany, so forth. But what I'm about to do, you can do with absolutely any marketplace. And so let's say that I'm going to go in and I'm just going to type in coffin shelf because this is our test listing. I think it's yeah. a market I am accustomed to, so I can show it to you um, pretty fast here. We have Manny's Mysterious Oddities. Now, this is our product. But as you can see, there's uh, coffin shelves pretty much across the board. And when we were first launching this product, we were actually one of the first to launch this product. And so you can see how drastically this market has changed mm -hmm. because now you have com competitors on competitors, right? But let's go into the Chrome extension. So I'm going to click the Chrome extension here. And if you don't have access to the Chrome extension, just make sure you go to helium10.com forward slash extension. So that's H-E-L-I-U-M 10.com forward slash extension. And you'll be able to add that to Chrome. I already have it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of jump right into it. I'm going to click X-ray here. And when I click X-ray, you'll find a lot of back-end information you otherwise wouldn't have access to. If you're just looking at the front end of this page, you wouldn't be able to see things like how many sales they are doing on average per month. You have the keyword sales, um, you have your sales graph, you have your revenue, 
for this product. You have your best seller rank, which of course you can go into each individual product and scroll all the way down to get this, but that's a bit time consuming if you wanna see everything stacked up next to one another. You have your seller country. So check this out. This seller is from Australia, but they're selling in the United States market. You also have a seller in China that's selling in the United States market and so forth, right? You then have your FBA fees. Now, this is going to be important because when you are trying to understand your profitability, mm -hmm. the fees are going to be one of those things that are going to be important, right? Because it's going to affect the bottom line of your business. So you'll want to make note of what the fees look like. And you can even see that there's a difference. You have a $10 fee and then you have a $13 fee. And so maybe something that I want to figure out is, well, what exactly is the dimensional difference between these two? Because when I'm going in and I'm sourcing my next product, let's say this wasn't my product and I'm just looking at expanding my offerings, or even if it was the first product, right? You want to make sure that you're going in and doing the most to get, uh, to really make your buck stretch, right? And so what I'm going to do is even go all the way to the side and maybe I want to drag and drop the dimension column over so I can get an understanding of what the exact difference is. And then I can start asking my supplier, all right, well, these are the dimensions that I want to work with. And maybe you don't just want to base it off of the FBA fee. So you can see here, there's, there's a, it's slightly bigger, right? So you have an inch difference right here, about an inch difference right there, and an inch difference. So it's just slightly bigger, but you can see that reflected in the FBA fees. And this is why you'd want to be super mindful. But maybe you go into the reviews for one of these products. And this one only has 127 reviews, but you can go in and start reading reviews. And maybe you'll end up finding something like this product is too small or too big. And then that's an additional factor you will want to consider as you are sourcing that product. And so go in into X-Ray and make sure you're taking a look at the backend data. Now I'm talking about product validation. What about product yeah. research, right? Which is what this uh, episode is really all about. So what I'm going to do is just pop open some of these products here, because let's say that you are on the search for your next product and you already have a niche. Well, how do I figure out what other products I can start targeting? or even markets that I can break into. So I'm gonna just select a few here. You guys will want to go in and maybe take your time, be really intentional. I mean, this right here is already a great opportunity, right? Because you have your bat shelf and you can imagine that someone who is interested in Gothic shelves year round, right? Not just for Halloween, they are probably gonna be interested in a bat shelf alongside a coffin shelf. And so maybe this is a product that you want to shortlist. Maybe this is something you can go ahead and make note of. But let's click Run Cere Cerebro right here so I don't have to copy and paste the ASINs. And what it's going to do is automatically open up Cerebro for us. And you'll have to excuse my Wi-Fi. We had a hurricane here last night, so the Wi-Fi is a bit <laughs> slower than usual. <laughs> All right, wonderful. So I selected five ASINs. Now, the first one that you select is always going to be your seed product. And this is, I will preface this by saying, Cerebro, you can do a single search or a multi-ASIN mm -hmm. search. So you can just put in one if you want or multiple. And in doing so, the first one is a seed product. So the rest are compared to that if you're looking at something like relative rank. So let's say you went to relative rank and you hovered over this. The bolded one is going to be that first product. So just so you know uh, what I mean by seed product, that's what you're looking at. Let's say going into 4,661 filtered keywords. Now you're trying to figure out, well, what else could I maybe be? looking into branching into, right? What other things could I go yeah, into? Yeah. So you can actually go in and let's say go through each one. You can open them up and X them out. But maybe I don't necessarily want to spend all my time going through 4,000 keywords, right? The whole point of these filters is so you can save your time and effort. And you can go in, select some parameters that you have in mind, maybe some things that are important to you, right? Not only is it something that's parallel, but 
you know that if the keyword is actually showing up for these product identifiers, then at least it's somewhat relevant to that niche. And so that is something that maybe you can already just go ahead and check off the box. Or maybe if your search terms are a little bit more broad and that's not fully off the table, you can go in and do either phrases containing, maybe you want to stick to the shelves market, right? You can go in mm -hmm. and type in shelf yeah. or exclude phrases containing. Maybe I don't want anything that's coffin related, but I want something that's still associated to these products. Then I can put that into exclude phrases, or I can even just go in and do search terms of, let's say at least 500. I want to see these keywords having a search of minimum 500 times every single month. Then I would type that in there. And if I were narrowing this down for keywords, let's say for the specific product, then I could use some of these other filters here. For example, competitor rank average and ranking competitors. I want to see one to two of these ASINs are ranking somewhere in the top 40 positions on when you take an average of those ASINs, you'd be able to put that in just to get keywords out. But again, we're looking for product opportunity. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go in and see if maybe I can find things that are on tangent. So since this is a Gothic themed product, maybe I'm interested in some things that have to do with like a bat, since we saw a bat earlier, maybe a skull. Yeah. And I'm just going to keep this at any. I apologize for this being a, a morbid niche <laughs> that we're looking at here. <laughs> but hopefully just seeing this, seeing you go through the motions, you can sort of start to get a feel for what you can do as well. So here you can see you have that shelf. If you're seeing my screen, you can see also that the search volume for bat shelf is 939. We put in a minimum of 500. And if I were mm -hmm. to click this graph icon, it's going to show me the historical information for that keyword. And so I can go into all time and get a feel for, is this something that's trending upwards, which it looks like it is doing slowly but surely, or maybe it is completely flatlined and it's an evergreen product that does well year round, or even it's something that's on the decline or it's not doing that well, that's not in demand, right? That's an indicator that it's not in demand. So you can go in, check that yeah. out for Amazon, for Google, for Walmart. It's really up to you, but maybe you are somebody who is selling on Amazon as well as Google. You're selling through mm -hmm. your own Shopify store or whatever. You would be able to just make sure that it's going to be good across the board for, for that. Yeah, I think what's interesting is we thought this product might be a seasonal product that will sell only in Halloween, but it looks like mm -hmm. it is selling year round, right? Yes. Yeah. And it's super interesting because that's part of the beauty of using software tools is sometimes mm -hmm. it does surprise you. It goes against your personal beliefs and you think that something yeah. won't do well year round, but there's really an audience cut out for coffin shelves and apparently for bat shelves. And you have mm -hmm. these people who are really interested in witchy decor year round, who want to put something for their crystals. They want a place, a nice place to put their crystals, or maybe this is something that's abstract, right? Every there's like this whole curve of minimalism and abstract art. And th this could be marketed that way as well. What else do we have here? We have the skull makeup brush holder. We have a skull bathroom decor, skull shaped charcoal. I don't know what this is. Let's open this up. Interesting. Oh, oh, this is, yeah, let's not. Okay, we've seen that. Yeah. So that's something this for fire scary. pits. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, I, it's ramping up for October, I guess, for the parts of the world that do celebrate Halloween. But yeah, that's an uh, interesting market. <laughs> 664 on average every single month, actually. And then you have that decreasing in search volume trend. So this is interesting to see because you can go in and see what's starting to pick up here. You have a 135% mm -hmm. increase. And let's see, skull kitchen accessories. You have a bat hook. Okay, so this is going to be a lot smaller. And if you actually have brand registry and your tokens connected mm -hmm. to, uh, to Helium 10, you'll be able to see your ABA data. So you can go in, check out your click share for these keywords. You can 
click the little icon for the graph and it's going to open up and show you your top three clicked ASIN. So if it doesn't say no, if it says no data, it's probably just because the term is newer. And so here you can see, even with the, the lower search volume, um, from the information that we are picking up and that it is providing, you can see there's about an 83% click share. And so the, what that's saying is the top 3% or the top three clicked ASINs, excuse me, they are actually catching 83% of the click share that is going to the search results page for bat hook. When somebody types in bat hook, 83% of the clicks are captured by the top three clicked ASINs. And of that, only 25% are actually converting. This is something you can look at and take two ways, right? You can say, all right, well, the top three clicked ASINs are catching a lot of this click share. And so a lot of, if a lot of this traffic is actually clicking into these top three mm -hmm. ASINs, maybe that product is actually what they're looking for. But if they're not converting, then maybe their copy isn't really good. And so you can start considering these as ideas and say, all right, well, this bat hook, for example, uh, and let's say we were getting the data for this, right? Yeah. I'm going to see if there's a, there's a good one that I can just open up and show you what, yeah, here you go. So here it's showing you the historical information for the top three ASINs. However, you also have the individual ASINs and what their click share and conversion share is. So if for the 83 or 85% one we were just looking at and you're opening this up and you're seeing that maybe just the, the first clicked ASIN has all of the click share, but it's not converting, then obviously there's, there's something amiss. And so you can go into that listing and open up that particular ASIN, see what's going on with the actual listing, understand is it actually a product that you can improve on, that you can start converting for? And then if it is, then maybe that is another idea that you want to shortlist. So here on the bat hooks page, you can see that we have this one with uh, with like eight winged feet, right? That That is, mm -hmm. that are hooks. And then you also have these yeah. single hooks and this does not really look like a bat shaped thing. So this is a relatively new market, as you can see. It has 664 roughly in search volume per month and you have one and two really. One, yeah. two, and three. And you can also see the reviews are not so high as well. Mm -hmm. The reviews are very, very low. So this is a good example of something that we can consider. It doesn't mean we have to run with it, we can start considering is it profitable? What can we improve with the product? Is there um, you know, something that we can add value to? Is there really something that we can come onto the market with zero reviews? Because like I said, there's six to eight weeks in between maybe the time that we are looking at this product and we're actually getting it to market. How much of that are we going to be able to improve on? So maybe if these products do end up having 300, 400 reviews, mm -hmm. you'll still be able to stack up as a zero review yeah. listing. You can also, what I've seen some people use this particular metric with is checking out mm -hmm. the click share conversion share, but then using it in conjunction with the organic and sponsored rank. Sometimes you'll mm -hmm. find that the organic rank is lower. Maybe it's position 15, 10, whatever the case may be lower on, on the actual top half of the first page, but the sponsored ranks really high. And so you can look at that information and start to think, okay, well, like, if I just run sponsored ads for this, then I can start generating some sales as well. And so it's just good to understand the keyword information because again, you guys, these products, they're not just based on, are they profitable? Can you add something to the market? Can you stack up with the competition? But it's also about the demand. You don't just want to be running or ranking or indexing for one keyword and that's it. You wanna be doing that for multiple keywords and so going into Cerebro is an excellent way to find products, but also validate those product ideas to ensure that your demand is level across the board, or at least that there are keyword phrases you can go after. And of course, bear in mind that the word count filter is excellent for finding those longer tail keywords that have stronger mm -hmm. buyer intent because you don't want to necessarily go in and rank for these keywords that are just office. 
you want to go in and find something that's white marble keyboard mat. And that's four, key, yeah. four words, but it's more specific. Somebody's looking to actually buy a particular product. And if you can just make that consumer feel like you are offering exactly what they're looking for, then that is what's going to get them to the purchase. So is there anything in particular on this, on these filters, Sammy, that perhaps you want me to cover? No, I think uh, we have touched upon a little bit on uh, differentiation a lot, right? So uh, we have touched upon that a little bit. So now why I came up with that question is uh, when we started in Amazon, we could sell a product which has good search volume and getting good sale and do not do any change, any differentiation, any value addition, and we can simply sell it, right? But right now, the market have completely changed. So when we now look at differentiating a product to launch in the market, the product, to launch in the market. what do you think? Uh, what do you think the differentiation should be? Is it like completely going off and creating a mold or going off changing the design, maybe adding some different colors? How do you look at it? When you're launching a new product? Yeah. I mean, I think it's always split testing. It is so much about split mm -hmm. testing, whether you are launching your first product or your next product, because it really comes down to what you can showcase about your brand, about your product to the consumer in the least amount of time and help them understand what it is you're offering. And the only way you can do that to the best of your capabilities is by really split testing everything across the board one at a time, just kind of rotating through, of course, do the proper research, craft your listing copy, your images, your product description, maybe your A plus content, if you have access to it, um, which you guys should, if you're uploading, I believe it's 14 pieces of content, then you can tap into that resource and go in and start split testing after that. So maybe you want to change out just your main image. If you think about the Amazon page, sometimes if you hover over a listing, you'll see that it has a, like a swipe occasionally. So you'll see the first and the second image. And so you want to go through and make sure that those two images at the very, very least are really optimized for conversion. So you can go in, have that running, and then take a look at your metrics, you know, constantly be checking back in, seeing how you're doing. For the keywords, you will want to, of course, have maybe your 20 to 40 keywords that you very intentionally select through things like Cerebro and Magnet and Pinterest trends and yeah. uh, maybe even incorporating some secondaries. So seeing what are, is frequently bought together for that particular product and going in, taking a look at both keywords for the frequently bought together items actually and incorporating those into maybe the, the back end of your listing or even if there is a really subtle but natural way for you to incorporate into your listing. It's a great way to start indexing elsewhere where you can start uh, getting some of that traffic that maybe doesn't know about your product yet, but would still be interested in that yeah. product because it's frequently bought together. So those, those kind of under uh, rated and not as well discussed tactics, you can take those, mm -hmm. incorporate them, go back in regularly into your listing and switch out things make sure that each part of your listing is great as a standalone. So if you and I were looking at a listing, we have to assume that maybe you and I are, are only going to look at the images. Maybe I'm not going to read your description or your bullet points at all. Yeah. Or maybe I'm only going to look at your bullet points. I don't care about the rest. But I know me, I always go mm -hmm. into reviews first. I will literally jump into a listing if the first image looks nice, and then I'll read the reviews first. And then if I feel like I still want to stay, then I'll take a look at the images next and then the bullet points really last. Um, maybe the, the, the A plus content, if it's there, then I'll look at that first. So it really depends. Everyone has their method, I believe, of how they scout through Amazon. But if you can really perfect the process of going back in and making sure that each one of your pieces is great as a standalone piece, and it is taking maybe those new keywords that are flowing into the market, into your listing as they are needed every now and then, then that is really, really good for launching, but also just staying at the forefront of your niche. Yeah, I think I would 100% agree on that. I would give an example like this. So I'll give, we were looking at one of our clients and right now, if you see mobile conversion is so much high, right? So much shoppers are going from mobiles. So it is like almost 70 to 80% or maybe more. 
So what we have seen is for a ASIN, now even Amazon in the business report, they provide us the data of mobile sessions and browser sessions, right? And then conversion rate or session percentage as well. So we're looking at two ASINs from the same particular brand of the same uh, seller. And we see the vast difference in one ASIN was getting 85% session in mobiles. And the second ASIN was getting maximum sessions from desktop. So I think, uh, as you said, making your decision by looking at the data is much more important right now, instead mm -hmm. of just making a decision on your instinct, right? So, yes, uh, absolutely. Sometimes the yeah. things you think will work will not work. And they. Sammy, can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, okay we're back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I think uh, obviously when we look at Heliumton right now, so it is more of for a seller if you want to make a data different decision, right? And what one or tip you would like to add to this? Because obviously Q4 is here, right? And mm -hmm. we would like to end this podcast with two tips from your side because you have been looking at a lot of data. So why not share two tips with our sellers right now? For just just in general? Because Q4 is here, right? Now we know yes. the cost per click is going to rise and the traffic is going to increase. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely go in and if you have access to search query performance, check that out. We actually at Helium 10, we recently did a webinar with Amazon that broke down search query performance and um, just how much they're really using the data that they have for Amazon users to mm -hmm. make sure that you have these keywords that are really going to get the most out for your product. So if you end up having search query perform, if you have access to it, make sure that you go in and utilize it. But outside of that, also ensure that you're using tools like Keyword Tracker and Index Checker to make sure you're actually indexing and ranking for those keywords that you want to be indexing and ranking for. Because if you end up, let's say, uh, you have very specific holiday themed keywords, right? and you only have a certain period to actually capitalize on them, then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that if they are relevant to you, you start early. So make sure you're not starting just like a week before you need to be ranking for them. Get ahead of that curve. I would start researching for them now and then even start making sure you're rotating out your listing copy. Your, um, like for example, if you're doing something for mm -hmm. Christmas or for example, for the coffin shelf, we're doing something for Halloween. You're gonna to want to maybe incorporate the coffin shelf somewhere in a Halloween themed thing from, from now. And so you can go in and yes, change out the listing to be more seasonally oriented a little bit ahead of time. So you are catching it as it's happening, but then you are also taking those keywords, putting them into keyword tracker and ensuring that you are not positioned 40, you know, maybe one day something happens to your PPC campaigns and all of a sudden you drop, you're going to want to go in and make sure that those are things that you are, in the know about and our insights dashboard actually is a really great way to do that is you can go in select your insight settings and when you go in you can actually select knowing being in the know you get an insight notification for when your keyword rank drops whether it's organic or sponsored maybe you're negative um you know there's there's a keyword you need to negative match or your campaign budget's been maxed out you really want to stay on top of your tacos your a costs right and so these are all things you can go in and take a look at using your tools, but especially insights dashboard. It's a really great way to do that because you can select them. And so that way, when you go into the dash, you'll automatically see it. So it's just a good way to streamline your process. Yeah, I think that was awesome. Thank you so much for sharing those awesome tips with our audience today. And I think the podcast that we had today, it is going to add a lot more value to the sellers who are facing challenges with product research. So, uh, Shivali, I think it was an awesome podcast today. Thank you so much for joining us today and sharing such valuable tips with us. 
Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.